The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, causes AIDS. AIDS, which is short for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, is one of the most devastating diseases that humans have yet faced. HIV weakens the immune system, leaving the body open to attack by other invaders. HIV infects two important cell types of the immune system, macrophages and helper T lymphocytes. When HIV infects macrophages, the immune system loses an important scavenger. Healthy macrophages prowl the body's tissues and engulf and digest or phagocytose infected cells, cellular debris, and pathogens. When HIV infects helper T lymphocytes, the immune system loses an essential activator. Helper T lymphocytes are required to activate B lymphocytes, which produce antibodies, and killer T lymphocytes, which kill virally infected cells of the body. Without healthy helper T lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes and killer T lymphocytes cannot fight infections. It is still not known precisely how the virus destroys the helper T lymphocyte population in the body. The infection itself seems to be the primary cause, while other cells appear to perform cell suicide. During the course of an HIV infection, the immune system loses a large number of these cells. Although the immune system eventually loses its battle with HIV, it does put up a good fight. The main defenses come from killer T lymphocytes. Some of the body's killer T lymphocytes recognize pieces of the virus that are displayed on infected cells. A killer T lymphocyte releases chemicals that burst the infected cell, thereby killing it and preventing it from producing more viruses. The immune system works hard trying to replenish the supply of helper T lymphocytes. However, HIV continues to infect new cells, and in the process, it often mutates. These mutations occur after the virus enters the cell and begins to make copies of its genetic material. This process is error-prone, and mutations are frequently incorporated into the HIV genome. The genetic material of the virus enters the nucleus and incorporates into the host cell's chromosomes. Here, the genetic code of the virus is used for the production of new viruses by the host cell. Each new virus produced carries the mutations in its genetic material, and these mutations result in proteins that have changes in amino acid sequence. Because the new mutated version of the virus is unfamiliar to the immune system, the previous army of killer T lymphocytes does not recognize the newly infected cells. The immune system has to combat this mutated version almost as if it were a new infection. Yet, as time passes, the ability of the immune system to combat these new infections greatly diminishes. Although it may take a decade or more, the helper T lymphocyte population is eventually too small to fight other infections. Killer T lymphocytes, even though they are not generally infected by the virus, also diminish in number. The loss of helper T lymphocytes reduces the ability of the remaining killer T lymphocytes, as well as B lymphocytes, to function, resulting in full-blown AIDS.